This is Harupa Valley, California. Nearly 100,000 people call it home. It is the newest city in California, yet its own roots predates California, becoming the nation's 31st state. Rich in its diversity and multicultural heritage, Harupa Valley is known as a community of communities. This richness is reflected in the faces of Harupa Valley. Young families, children, senior citizens, and equestrians alike all reside here. They learn in its schools and libraries. They enjoy its parks, golf courses, trails, and community museums. They honor the community's veterans. Home to beautiful vistas, modern transit systems, active parklands, regional centers of commerce, and its own historic airport, Harupa Valley is a microcosm of California itself. Harupa Valley just turned two. Its next birthday, maybe its last. It would have the shortest life of any city in the state's 162-year history, and it is all because of the state and the passage of Senate Bill 89 in June 2011. It caused the loss of 47% of the city's first-year revenue. From its second year on, the city stands to lose approximately 35% of its fair share of revenue each and every year thereafter. If there is not a legislative solution to rectify the effect of SB 89, the city will be insolvent by the middle of 2015. This is a fiscal crisis created by the state and not by any decision made by the city or its constituents. Our story is about parity. Never in a million years did I imagine that four cities in the state of California would be treated differently than all other 478 cities. The passage of SB 89 created a fiscal inequity between cities, those that incorporated before the passage of Proposition 1A in 2004 and those that incorporated afterwards. Those that were incorporated prior to Proposition 1A receive an additional appropriation of property tax in lieu of motor vehicle licensing fees. Those that incorporated afterwards do not receive these same monies. In 2006, realizing an inequity caused by Proposition 1A, then-Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger signed into law Assembly Bill 1602. This attempt at parity granted newly incorporated cities an enhanced amount of MVLF as an offset to the property tax not realized by other cities due to provisions of Proposition 1A. It was in reliance of the provisions of AB 1602 that made the incorporations of Harupa Valley, Eastville, Menifee, and Wildemar fiscally feasible. Senate Bill 89 eliminated in its entirety the distribution of MVLF to all cities and in effect overturned the provisions of AB 1602. The rules changed after the fact, after the approval of fiscal feasibility studies, after affirmation of voters, and after major expenses were already incurred. In 2011, SB 89 diverted these revenues to pay for law enforcement grants previously paid by the state general fund. When we found out the true ramifications of SB 89, employees from this city and positions within the police department were lost. They were lost not because we had to pay our fair share. They were lost because we lost twice as much money as almost every single city in the state of California lost. The fundamental responsibility of the state is to provide for safety, health, and the quality of life of its residents. And the very best way for people to do that is through strong, stable cities. This funding shift that took place has denied the city of Harupa Valley the ability to provide just basic services to its people. If SB 56 can pass, it will restore that funding and allow our city to provide those basic fundamental services that everyone wants in our state. What happens in this classroom affects our students for the rest of their lives. Without the proper funding, students do not come well prepared for our schools. Without the proper preparation, they don't experience success, which ultimately affects them negatively individually, but it impacts their families and our society as, as a whole. There is a solution. State Bill 56 expands existing MVLF property tax formula enjoyed by every other city in the state to its four newest municipalities. It facilitates a fair and equal distribution of taxes to all cities in California. Its passage rights the wrong created by SB 89. It ensures revenue parity between all cities. Harupa Valley is actively facing its fiscal dilemma. It has met multiple times with the governor's staff, the State Department of Finance, and members of the legislature. Last year, the genesis of these efforts was the creation of Senate Bill 1566. Co-authored by Senators Gloria Necrete McLeod and Bill Emerson, this bipartisan-supported legislation would reinstate the provisions of AB 1602. It was overwhelmingly passed in both houses of the state legislature, only to be vetoed by the governor. This year, it is a new effort in the form of SB 56. 
If this legislative effort fails, the city of Harupa Valley and all newly formed cities are facing various degrees of forced insolvency. For Harupa Valley, it will mean the filing of a petition with the Riverside County Local Agency Formation Commission to disincorporate. No city has disincorporated under current law, and no city has disincorporated since 1973. In order to meet legal requirements, the filing needs to occur by December 2013. Time is of the essence to save the city of Harupa Valley. The legislature needs to pass corrective legislation, get that to the governor's desk and have the governor sign this legislation. So these cities who for the last three years have been negatively impacted financially can recover some of this money to provide the critical frontline public safety services that are so critical, especially right now in the middle of realignment, the biggest public safety shift in California in over 60 years. The passage of SB 56 is about fairness and parity between all cities. It is about home rule and it is about the preservation of public safety. We worked three and a half hard years in becoming a city and especially going through a comprehensive fiscal analysis. When that was completed, we knew we had a city and we became a city on October 1st, 2010. Approximately one year later, a third of our budget was taken with the removal of the vehicle license fee. It is essential that that funding is restored to the city of Eastvale so that we can provide the community and all its residents what was promised them when we filed for incorporation in the first place. Without the legislation SB 56 and recovering those funds that we lost in VLF, we'll be unable to provide public safety to the level that was promised the residents and that goes for police protection and fire protection. If we don't provide these services, including these parks here, who will? In the city of Menifee's case, we have had a 27% increase in public safety costs over the last three fiscal years. Meanwhile, our property tax revenue has been flat and our sales tax revenue has been anemic at best. In our case, we're talking about the very fiscal viability of these four new cities. I'm standing in the middle of Martin O'Brien Park, one of our city's assets and unfortunately lost funding just prior to the VLF loss of funding. This is the result of us not having the money to balance our budget and do anything other than cut police. And because we had to cut police and that's our priority, this park is way lower on the list than that. And unfortunately, this is the result of our loss of, of our VLF funding. We need SB 56 back so we can bring back our parks, bring back our police force, and bring back our public safety to the levels they were at before the loss of VLF. At a minimum, the public safety in these four cities may be critically compromised as there will be no offsetting revenues to the County of Riverside and it would have to reassume direct responsibility for law enforcement. If funding is not restored to these communities, it was taken away in a very unfortunate manner, in one case right before the city incorporated, that's going to have dire consequences for the quality of life and the public safety of every member of those communities, including Europa Valley. To it, there will be an increased burden placed on the California Highway Patrol, which will have to take up responsibility for traffic accident investigation and enforcement. They are spread very thin across the state. The Riverside County Sheriff's Department, their staff will be part of a larger entity, no longer, for example, in the city limits of Europa, but in a larger entity called the unincorporated area across 7,300 square miles of Riverside County. There's always been a little inequity in the way cities are funded. Newly incorporated cities since 2004 do not get the same backfill rate of property taxes as existing city. That creates an inequity in the way they're funded. We're not asking for any kind of handout. We're not asking for any special consideration. What we do ask the governor and the state legislature is to exercise good public policy in the way cities and local jurisdictions are equitably funded so that we can partner with the state in performing the services and functions that they need us to do. That's all we ask. No public dollars were used for the production or distribution of this film.